been reserved for the king's pleasure. Therefore the king's portion is reserved for you. A prepared position awaits you with the king of kings sitting at the head of the table. He desires that you sup with him in the presence of your enemies. By accepting his personal invitation, your needs are met, the desires of your heart fulfilled, and to top it off, you will receive the exceeding abundant above all you can ask for or even think of. Imagine that. The more you understand the king's heart, without a shadow of a doubt, you will begin to make more room for heaven's treasures. Welcome to King's Portion. This is Catherine Joy Foster. And the theme of our program today is the tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is part 118. Now your life in Christ has already been prearranged. God created a unique need that only you can feel. In reality, that removes all perceived competition, which heals any potential insecurity. Owner occupied, discover your sense of belonging in Christ alone. Your Christ image will gloriously reflect your divine significance. That is how you bring everything you influence under the dominion of the King of Glory. You will be fully satisfied as God's design, knowing the fulfillment of your spirit-led assignment through Jesus has crammed every void. We want to take a look at just how God made the heaven and the earth. In Genesis, the first chapter, the first through the third verses from the King James Version says that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said, let there be light and there was light. Now, that first scripture from the first verse says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Then after millions of years, the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. This, so you can understand that God did not create the heaven and earth in that condition without form or void of darkness upon the face of the deep. But it was when Satan got ousted, him and the one third angels who followed him were forcefully removed from heaven. And that's how the earth became perverted. But then God uses himself as a creator with the Spirit of God and the Word of God, which is Jesus, to recreate what he always wanted in the first place. In Psalm 115, the 15th through the 18th verse from the King James Version says, Ye are blessed of the Lord, which made a heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of of men and that's every man whether they are saved or unsaved the dead praise not the lord neither any that go down into silence but we will bless the lord from this time forth and forevermore praise the lord so when we're looking at this scripture we understand now we have an assignment and this is the way it is set so that there can be bi-location rights where we can be seated in the heavenly places in Christ 
that's one location, but then we're also creating spaces for God to inhabit in the earth. And that is when he has habitation, he has rest, and then everything changes to look like heaven on earth. Now, this is what happened when God created man in his own image and his likeness. He blessed them in Genesis, the first chapter, 28th verse from the King James Version. God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and over everything that moveth upon the earth. So now God is saying, I'm giving you the express authority with the same power that I have in the earth and the heavens as well as even the perverted area that the enemy was trying to assume Adam and Eve had still the power over them. They chose what they chose that caused the fall of man. Let's also look in Genesis, the third chapter. It says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, has God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. So now she's believing the lie because God said, don't eat it and you would die if you do. But he didn't say anything about touching it. So she was believing that she could not even touch it. Now, this is what the serpent said unto the woman, luring her in to rebellion. Ye shall not surely die for God doth know that in the day ye shall eat of it, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now they were already gods because God had given them the dominion. Anytime he says that be fruitful, multiply, replenish to do and have dominion, you are seen as God in the earth, knowing good and evil. See, this is how God wants to train us that we could actually enjoy earth and heaven and the rights thereof just by obeying his voice. And that should be enough that we respond to him responsibly and obediently and immediately when he gives us command. It is not to be by punishment and knowing good and evil will give them the experience that they really didn't want. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. So this is what happened is that she was lured in by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. The three things that will cause anyone to be in the world system instead of the kingdom of God system. And their eyes were both open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed thick leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now what happened is that the only thing they received was the experience that they were naked. Why? Because the glory of the Lord that once moved them to the highest place that covered them now had lifted from them. 
And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden because sin will cause you to hide from God instead of running to him. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said to him, where art thou? And he said, I heard that voice in the garden and I was afraid because fear creates insecurity. He said, because I was naked, that means he was, was exposed and that I hid myself because he didn't want God to see him the way he was. And God said, who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Now God is so gracious and so gentle that he never accused Adam. He wanted him to respond. And this was the first court scene, courts of heaven you could see in the earth. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat it. Now he did not want to take responsibility for what he did. So he started blaming God and blaming Eve. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou have done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. So she also was playing the blame game as well. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, which will be Satan, because thou have done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. And upon thy belly thou shalt go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head which means that the seed of the woman will take the enemy and have the necks of the enemy and the necks of the enemy mean that the headship of the enemy will be under the feet of the seed of the woman which is Jesus Christ which is also us and thou shall bruise his heel. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. See, before sin, there would have been that anointed birth canal where the children would slip out instead of the laborious pain that she would have and also instead of the husband ruling over her they would have been seen as joint heirs and unto adam god said because thou have hearkened to the voice of thy wife and have eaten of the tree of which i commanded thee saying thou shalt not eat of it cursed is the ground for thy sake and in sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee and thou shalt eat the herb of the field in the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread till thou return into the ground for out of it was thou taken for dust thou art and to dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Now what happened here that we can know that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For he that hangeth on the tree died for us so that the blessing of Abraham might come to because of the redemption plan of God, everything that was cursed was reversed. And then it goes on to say, unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make 
coats of skins and clothe them. So this is the first atonement for their sin that could be found in the earth, the shedding of blood. And the Lord God said, behold, behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. Now what happened? How did they know good and evil? Because Satan was trying to concoct a plan and that's how they experienced evil. He did not want them to learn by mistakes, but by his personal mentorship, by the commandments from his mouth. He says, and now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. If they had taken of the tree of life and ate it, they would have lived in the state of sin forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the land and the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man. That means they got evicted from their inheritance. And he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Knowing this, that the tree of life is still now available to us, there has been the reverse of the curse that Jesus has done for us. Now, what is a message we'd like to leave with you today? Your breakthrough brand is the secret to your rhythm of life in the kingdom of God. Having, hosting, and holding on to the mind of Christ, you will discover the uninterrupted course that has been accurately arranged for you. Holy Spirit will teach you how to choose the best so you always live in the circle of blessing, never the cycle of defeat. Eternal life, resurrection life, and abundant life remains seamless. I will be right back after this message from our sponsor. The Catherine Joy Foster Music Ministries is a 21st century multimedia marketplace ministry. In your discovery, you will find the power of God present to go where you are, to take you where Jesus is, raising you up, repairing you, restoring you, so that you can be as Jesus is in this world. Now available for workshops, banquets, conferences, webinars, concerts, prayer meetings. You can call area code 216 486 8615 extension 1 again that's area code 216-486-8615 extension 1 proud to be an advertiser for king's portion web radio welcome back to king's portion again the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out your breakthrough brand is the secret to your rhythm of life in the kingdom of God. Having, hosting, and holding on to the mind of Christ, you will discover the uninterrupted course that has been accurately arranged for you. Holy Spirit will teach you how to choose the best so that you always live within the circle of blessing, never the cycle of defeat. Eternal life, resurrection life, and abundant life remains seasonless. Now let's talk about this. When there is vision in the earth, it is an imitation of what we receive from heaven, which is a heaven-born possibility, or from the hell, and hell-bent probability. The vision that we receive in the earth either receives God's provision or Satan's division. That means that there is creation from God and there is corruption from Satan. 
then we can see the two, how they work. We want to look in James, the third chapter, the 13th through the 18th verse from the King James Version, because now you'll be able to see the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of the kingdom of God. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew forth out of a good conversation, which is a lifestyle, his works with meekness of wisdom, that we have a teachable spirit, that we will learn how to receive God's wisdom and use it every choice we need to make. He says, but if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, which is from God, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish, which means it is a hell-bent probability. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. It looks like hell on earth. But wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So we see that there's a vast difference and you could see just how things operate in the earth and whose wisdom is chosen. Is it the wisdom of the world from Satan or is it the wisdom of God from God? In Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter, the 8th verse from the King James Version said, He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whoso breaketh an hedge, a serpent shall bite him. Let's show you exactly what happens. That there is from Satan, there's temptation to do wrong. There is also him accusing you before God after you've done wrong. But then this is his approach from the very beginning. He doesn't break the hedge. He waits for us to break the hedge. And then that's when he bites. What we need to know is anytime you're in a war, you have to know yourself and you have to know the enemy. In this case, we also have to know God. And if we don't know any of the people who are in the war, then we are going to lose every time. But Psalm 25, the 12th through the 14th verse from the Living Bible says, where is the man who fears the Lord? That means we have reverence for God enough to honor him and humble ourselves before him to what he says. He says, God will teach him how to choose the best. He shall live within God's circle of blessing and not the cycle of defeat. And his children or his offspring shall inherit the earth. Friendship with God is reserved for those who reverence him. With them alone, he shares the secrets of his promises. So now God wants to show you how to choose the best, but he wants to increase the intimacy so you will be a covenant friend with him so he can share his secrets with you. And that would be considered revelation. Let's also look in Proverbs, the 13th chapter, the 14th verse from the King James Version says, the law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. So then there's a law that we want to make sure that operates the same way every time, which means we need to submit ourselves to the law of God, which is a law of the wisdom of God. And then it says in Proverbs, the 14th chapter, the 12th verse from the King James Version says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. But even then the Holy Spirit can help us to choose the way of escape that comes along with 
the temptation so that we can always choose the best. So then it says in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, the 23rd verse from the King James Version, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. That means we're guarding our heart with the word of God, with the spirit of God. We have angels, but then we also have the Prince of Peace, Prince of Life, who has an unlimited arsenal that guarantees perfect protection personally, who guards our heart as a bodyguard for us. Then it also says in the Psalm 68 20, and this is the King James Version, he that is our God is a God of salvation and unto God the Lord belong the issues from death. Now that same verse beginning with the 19th verse also from the common English Bible says, bless the Lord, the God of our salvation supports us day after day. Selah, our God is the God of salvation and escape from certain death comes through God, my Lord, which means that there is the way of escape with the temptation that God provides so that we can always choose the best. In Proverbs, the 18th chapter, the 21st verse from the King James Version says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So that means that your mouth is an informant of what's going on in your heart and it will show forth life or death. In this case, you don't want even premature death. Then in Proverbs, the 15th chapter, the fourth verse from the King James Version says, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, which means it leads you back to the garden of Eden. But perverseness therein is a breach of the spirit. And that word perverseness in Hebrew means self-defeating, contrary, stubbornly, unreasonable and that means that you are not going to get what you really desire but you're going to get what you really don't want and that would be premature death but you can change your confession this day when you change your heart let's begin with this prayer that I want to speak over you. So I bind the spirit of murder, suicide, premature death, premature life, deception, error, lies, destruction, the spirit of self-destruction, as well as the spirit of death. And I command you to leave by the blood of Jesus right now. And we thank you right now that we receive Lord Jesus, the resurrection life, the abundant life, the everlasting life that you have for us, which is the life of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now on our program today, you can enjoy the music of Fred Council. And he's going to present to you Emmanuel. That is God with us. He just didn't want to be with us from a distance, but he wanted to have an habitation with us because his desire is to be intimate with us. Now let's listen to Emmanuel Fred Council. There's no one better 
no one else will do. You are the reason I believe it's you. I dedicate my life to unusual service. Go out of my way, God, because you deserve it. There's no one greater. There's no one greater. on the web at blog.kingsportionlive.com. That's blog.kingsportionlive.com. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. Your breakthrough brand is a secret to your rhythm of life in the kingdom of God. Having, hosting, and holding on to the mind of Christ you will discover the uninterrupted course that has been 
accurately arranged for you. Holy Spirit will teach you how to choose the best so that you can always live in the circle of blessing, never the cycle of defeat, eternal life, resurrection life, and abundant life are seamless. First, we are going to talk about the learning experiences that we have in the earth. And there are three. The first one is sensory knowledge, which is learning by the five natural senses. What you see, what you hear, what you touch, what you smell, and what you taste. And then the second one is intellectual knowledge. And this is book learning, maybe from school or maybe from even self-instruction or any other source, but you're learning it intellectually and it actually expands your mind. And then third is the revelation knowledge that can only be sent from God. Now, the 1828 dictionary says this in terms of the word revelation. It says the act of disclosing or discovering to others what was before unknown to them. So this is God making known to us something that was before unknown. And even though it could be in the intangible state, he expects us to bring it into a place of being tangible. In Proverbs, the 29th chapter, the 18th verse from the Amplified Version, the Classic Edition says, where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God, the people perish. So what happens is that if we are not receiving what God wants us to see in the earth, this is what you call premature death. But he said, but he who keeps the law of God, which includes that of man, blessed, happy, fortunate, and enviable is he. That means that we are blessed to be a blessing and that has been achieved. Now, it shows this, that we need to be in a posture where we are hearing from God. From the Hebrew honey, there's a word, appear, that means, quote, visibility must remain limitless so God will not be missed when he chooses to appear, end quote. That means that we need to be alert to hear God all the time. He is the word of God. He has something to say, and we want to posture ourselves and our hearts and our ears to hear everything he has to say to us and we miss nothing that he wants to say to us. Let's look at the live and the ministry of George Washington Carver and he lived from 1864 to 1943 and this is what he said about the experiments that he had in his laboratory, even from taking that peanut and making it into over 300 different products was so diverse. This is his quote, quote, no books ever go into my laboratory. The thing I am to do and the way are revealed to me the moment I am inspired to create something new without God to draw aside the curtain I would be helpless only alone can I draw close enough to God to discover his secrets end quote so you see now he is receiving revelation knowledge that only can come from God and he in the place where he's dependent on what God has to say the second 
example we like to use is from Daniel, the first chapter from the King James Version. Now, this is when King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, went unto Jerusalem and he beseeched it. And what he wanted was found in verse four. He says, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science, such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace in whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank. So nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Meshach, Cedric, and Abednego, to whom the prince of the eunuchs gave new names. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now this is Daniel as a slave and he's asking for favor with the enemy. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who has appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. Then Daniel said to Melzer, which is the prince of the eunuchs, he had set over the four Hebrew boys, prove thy servants, I beseech ye, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus, Melzer took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. And as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dream, which means God added his super on their natural to make them naturally supernatural. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar and the king communed with them and among them all was found none like Daniel, Shedre, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore stood they before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm, and this is the enemy's realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. Now let's look at these statistics first. And we see in Daniel first chapter, the 12th verse says, prove thy servants, I beseech thee 10 days and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. So then 
the proving time was 10 days. And we see that they were fatter and fairer than the rest of them. And this is what happened after the king proved them. In verse 20, in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all of his realm. So now this is in 10 days. They were 10 times better than everyone else. That is revelation knowledge that they downloaded. Let's look at the quote from Malcolm Gladwell, who is the best-selling author of Outliers. And this is what he said, quote, to become an expert, it takes 10,000 hours, approximately 10 years of deliberate practice, end quote. So now they did not have the deliberate practice, but they definitely outclassed the enemy on every level. Now, I'm going to give you uh, several stories about me. At age 14, I had an opportunity to work in my dad's office as his office manager. This is me not knowing how to really type. And this is one of those old typewriters, the black ones, where you need a whole lot of white out. And at the end of the summer, my dad went home and told my mom that I had written all these collection letters and people were sending him the money that they owed him. Now, at 14, the things I knew about money was how can I get more allowance from my parents so that I can have more money to spend. But here, 40 years later, I was able to receive revelation from God. And from that revelation, he gave me a proposal. And this is what happened. It would happen on one Saturday morning and I was praying. And I kept running back to my paper to write down what I was downloading. And at the end of an hour or so, I received what God designed for me to turn into my employer. Now, at the time... I was in a place where I needed to have favor with the enemy. With this proposal that God gave us, when we presented it, we received the $50,000 over a five-year period. At the end of the year, the Lord purged the person who gave us the money, and this is what he said, quote, I didn't think this was going to be nothing, but now I see that it is a movement end quote. God purged him because God wanted me to see how he felt that he was the one, God, who gave us the favor. Favor with God, favor with man, and favor over the enemy. That's showing that we need to have the revelation of knowledge that only comes from God, the Spirit of God, the Word of God from God alone so that we can have the heaven born possibility that God has for us in the earth and not any hell bent probabilities. I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. I was just standing there basking in the sun and all of a sudden I was soaking wet. There wasn't a sign in the sky, so I was unprepared without an umbrella. But in the end, it just didn't matter. I loved every minute of it. I knew I was living under open heavens. It really does give new meaning to being overtaken by blessing, not a dry spot. This is Fran the Fan of H-D-O-R. Uh-oh, here comes the rain again. been listening to King's Portion Live with web host Catherine Joy Foster. Welcome back to King's Portion where the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. Your breakthrough brand is a secret to your rhythm of life in the kingdom of God in the earth. Having, hosting, and holding on to the mind of Christ, you will discover the 
uninterrupted course that has been accurately arranged for you. Holy Spirit will teach you how to choose the best so that you're going to always live in the circle of blessing, never the cycle of defeat. Eternal life, resurrection life, and abundant life remains seasonless. Now we are going to look at the mind of Christ. In 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, the ninth through the 16th verse from the King James Version says, For as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of men the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And then this loving that we love the Lord with all our heart and our mind, our soul and strength and love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And that gives us a posture to receive even more as God's friend, covenant friend. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit, Holy Spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God, revelation knowledge. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. That's revelation knowledge. That's intellectual knowledge, even sensory knowledge as well. But the highest is the revelation knowledge, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, but they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Why don't you say after me, I have the mind of of Christ. I am out of my mind and I am into his. I have his mind. I host his mind and I hold on to his mind. Now it says in 2 Timothy 1 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And that sound mind is wisdom. Now all these characteristics, all 27, you'll find that Jesus had them. When we look in Isaiah the 11th chapter, the second to the fifth verses, as well as the 10th verse from the King James Version, you will see all nine of them. It says, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And this is a prophecy about Jesus, but because we are the body of Christ and he's the head and we are connected to him, we have the same thing that he has. It says, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, nor reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips till he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. So now you can see the nine. Their wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge. The fear of the Lord, which is reference for God, righteousness, faithfulness, and glory. And the second is the love. 
And that is from Galatians, the fifth chapter, and the 22nd and 23rd verses from the King James Version says, And the fruit of the Spirit, which is Holy Spirit, on our spirit, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And what you want to see here is those nine are what the Holy Spirit works in our life. And they are 100%. What we need to do is move everything out the way, which will help us so that he can fully impress us. So then any expression we make will be his. Then the nine power gifts are found in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 1st through the 12th verses from the King James Version says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. They were seduced. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God ever calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of a healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecies, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. And that's the spirit's will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. So that means that Jesus is the head. We are the body. And the Holy Spirit is the one whose mind we have. Now again, on our program today, you are going to enjoy the music of a Fred Council as he presents, I'm standing. What he's showing here is that we have moved out of the way of Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And we have joined him as one body. We have joined him with one mind, the mind of Christ. We have joined him in nourishment of the body, which is the word of God, so that we can have the creation of God that he wants in the earth, the heaven-born possibilities. Now let's listen to I'm Standing, Fred Council, and I'll be right back. Pardon the movement. Dust from the ground in my eyes. Spinning, trying to figure out how I ended up here Visions unclear, haunted by some memories and voices in my ear This is serious, and I'm paralyzed No gameplay, no extra life I'm trying to find my balance And this one cannot be fixed by my talents Or any of my merits Crawl to my knees, where is the remedy? So much to do, God, this is killing me Not where I need to be but you, I need to see What can you see in me? I felt you again indeed Slurring and staggering Body running on E But you never gave up and I was clear to me And I finally see What you made me to be And you gave me the strength to make it to my feet Picking up the pieces Dusting myself out Stumbling a bit But I'm standing now I'm 
corner needed Nearly unconscious nonsense Got me again and I can't defend it I'm nearly gonna end it What's left, what's next The end is in my eyes But there is no way I can make it to that finish line Not even on my mind Struggling to survive Still wondering if there is a way I can press rewind But that's over now In the grave, casket clothes Learn my lesson and I'm alive Gotta move And the time is now Gotta look ahead Get up on my feet I won't be left for dead Stop to my feet God, you're the remedy Clouds moving on and now I see He lives in me He took the pain And now I'm free Picking up the pieces Dusting myself out Stumbling a bit But I'm standing now I'm standing now Not laying down Never counted out Fresh record slate clean And I'm standing now I'm standing And these two are standing on the shoulders of the one who's sitting focused in the throne room Who knows what I'm going through I'm a soldier, in case you ain't noticed my camouflage suit It is camouflage, guess you can't see the hand of God unless you analyze It's not apparent to the eyes of the blind like a parable And what you can't surmise, you just decide to call a miracle But a miracle mirrors who? Yeshua, that's who I salute Also, I reserve the right, they call him God, the living group So I take off off this noose and he break off the chains I get up from being buried under guilt under shame buried under pressure of a counterfeit king the lesser prince of the air he's a counterfeit dream that's why I keep my eyes open wide and I don't see the truth and like none of these lies I'm looking up looking up looking up high looking for that chariot of fire ah Picking up the pieces, dusting myself out Stumbling a bit, but I'm standing now I'm standing now Not laying down, never counted out Fresh record, slate clean, and I'm standing now I'm standing now I'm standing back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. Your breakthrough brand is the secret to your rhythm of life in the kingdom of God. Having, hosting, and holding onto the mind of Christ, you will discover the uninterrupted course that has been accurately arranged for you. Holy Spirit would teach you how to choose the best that you always live in the circle of blessing, never the cycle of defeat. Eternal life, resurrection life, and abundant life remains seasonless. Now we're going to take a look into Jesus' life. And he had Holy Spirit without measure because he had the word of God. Let's look in Luke the second chapter, the 41st through the 52nd verses from the voice translation. And it says, every year during Jesus' childhood, his parents traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration. When Jesus was 12, he made the journey with them. They spent several days there participating in the whole celebration. When his parents left for home, Jesus stayed in Jerusalem, but Joseph and Mary were not aware. They assumed Jesus was somewhere in the caravan that was traveling together. After they had already traveled a full day's journey toward home, they began searching for him among their friends and relatives. When no one had seen the boy, 
Mary and Joseph rushed back to Jerusalem and searched for him. After three days of separation, they finally found him sitting among a group of religious teachers in the temple, asking them questions, listening to their answers. Everyone was surprised and impressed that a 12-year-old boy would have such deep understanding and could answer questions with such wisdom. Jesus had revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit and it actually showed that he outclassed even the doctors who were in the temple that day. His parents, of course, had a different reaction. This is Mary to Jesus. Son, why have you treated us this way? Listen, your father and I have been sick with worry for the last three days, wondering where you were, looking everywhere for you. This is Jesus' reply. Why did you need to look for me? Didn't you know that I must be working for my father? Neither Mary nor Joseph really understood what he meant by this. But Jesus went back to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. His mother continued to store these memories like treasures in her heart. And Jesus kept on growing in wisdom, in stature, this is mystery, in favor with God and with others. There is a John Eckhart who talks about arrested development. This is where the enemy assigns the demonic to arrest someone's development, specifically from age zero to 13. But we reverse that curse in the name of Jesus and they'll grow in the honor and the glory and the magnification that God wants them to be in the glory of the Lord by the name of Jesus. They will mature and they will be secure in God. Now, let's look at how Jesus handled things in the earth. There are scriptures that we can actually read every day that help us tune in to Jesus' lifestyle where we're living through him. In John, the fifth chapter, 30th verse from the Amplified Version, the Classic Edition says, and this is the words of Jesus, I am able to do nothing for myself independently of my own accord, but only as I am taught by God and as I get his orders, even as I hear, I judge, I decide as I'm bidding to decide. And as the voice comes to me, so I give a decision and my judgment is right, just, righteous, because I do not seek or consult my own will. I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself, my own aim, my own purpose, but only the will and pleasure of the Father who sent me. And this is Jesus being sanctified to God. But then in John, the 14th chapter, the 30th and 31st verses from the Amplified Version, the Classic Edition, this is Jesus. He says, I will not talk to you much more for the prince of this world, Satan, is coming and Satan has no claim on me. He has nothing in common with me. There is nothing in me that belongs to him and he has no power over me. But Satan is coming and I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know, be convinced that I love the Father and that I do only what the Father has instructed me to do. I act in full agreement with his orders. Rise, let us go away from here. So we now we see that Jesus was also separated from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, which is in the world system. This is Jesus' instruction about the abundant life in John 10, 10 from the King James Version. It says, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. 
I have come that they might have a life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now let's also look what Jesus says about resurrection life. In John the 11th chapter, the 25th and the 26th verse from the King James Verse says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? And then Jesus' instruction about eternal life is in John, the fifth chapter, the 24th verse from the King James Version. And it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, which is God, hath everlasting life and hath not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. So now you see uh, the um, abundant life, the resurrection life, and the eternal life. But there are choices we make in the earth. And you can find this in Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, the 15th through the 20th verses from the King James Version. It says, see, I set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land, whether thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but will be drawn away, and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish. And that is premature death. And that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to give them so now this is Moses giving them instruction about choosing life and death and blessing and cursing and he gives them the answer choose life for God is our life and he is not only our abundant life, our eternal life, our resurrection life, but he is our quality of life for us to have in the earth today. But you know what? You may not know Jesus Christ as your personal savior. And now is the time that you can pass from death unto life. Why don't you say this prayer after me? Say, Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I recognize Jesus as the only way to you. And I accept his sacrifice, the blood sacrifice that stands and speaks for me. And I ask you to forgive me of any transgression, any iniquity, even back to Adam and cover it with the blood. And I ask you to forgive me of any sin against you come into my heart be the savior of my life and the lord of my life and i recognize that now old things have passed away and they are dead and old things have passed away and they are dead and new things are here all things are new now all things are new now and now I'm the newest creation in the body of Christ. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, why don't you email us at info at kingsportionlive.com. That's info at kingsportionlive.com. And we'll send you some encouragement along the way. Now, let's return to remaining portions of King's Portion Live after this message from our sponsor. We invite you to visit our new interactive website. Please log on to www.kingsportionlive.org. That's www.kingsportionlive.org. We believe that you will discover something that will speak to the royal blood in you. Thanks for staying tuned for the conclusion of King's Portion Live. Your breakthrough brand is a secret to your rhythm of life in the kingdom of God. Having, hosting, and a holding onto the mind of Christ, you will discover the uninterrupted course that has been accurately arranged for you. Holy Spirit will teach you how to choose the best so that you always live in the circle of blessing and never the cycle of defeat. Resurrection life, eternal life, and abundant life remain seamless. Now you can activate God's word. Because wherever his word is, his spirit comes to create heaven on earth. And so if you're looking to have revelation knowledge, Psalm 119, 97 through 100 is a perfect place to begin from the King James Version. It says, oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments have made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. So now you can see by activating this verses out loud, you'll find that you'll be wiser than your enemies, you have more understanding than your teachers and even more understanding than the ancients, those who have gone before us, like George Washington Carver, uh, like Daniel. And now we can do the greater works because Jesus said we would do greater works than he, because he will be inside of us. Now let's look at this. We need to meditate on the word. And Psalm 119, 148 says, Mine eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. That means day and night he's looking to receive from God. And then in terms of not only meditating the word, but as you meditate on the word, it is magnified. In Psalm 138, the second verse from the King James Version, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth for thou have magnified thy word above all thy name so when you're looking at that words that are above thy name you can see the covenant of God and then not only magnified but multiplied in Acts the 12th chapter the 20 fourth verse from the King James verse says, but the word of God grew and multiplied. Now you could see meditating on the word, magnifying the word, multiplying word because the word is alive. Also we want to look at our naturally being supernatural. In Ephesians, the first chapter, the third verse says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now that phrase, spiritual blessings, in Greek means supernatural disposition. So we are naturally supernatural. Now we have the blessing upon us, and from that, then you could see uh, how the blessing also gravitates toward us where we can actually see it. In Psalm 68, the 19th verse says, Blessed be the Lord 
who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Selah. So now we're talking about that he's giving us too much, too much, so much, exceedingly, abundantly above all that you can ask or think much. Now we want to look at this, that we have an assignment somewhere, and it says in Psalm 68, 6, from the King James Version, God set the solitary in families. That means it's not to be replaced by any other institution. He bringeth out those who are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. And what we need to do is work with the word of God and the spirit of God so we know what our assignment is. Our assignment can be in of one or more mountains in the earth, which is the family, government, religion, education, business, media, and arts and entertainment. We could see where our bent is because the Holy Spirit is going to show us how we're going to bring about heaven-born possibilities within the earth. In Lester Sumrall's book, The Making of a Champion, he says this, quote, when a man is left to himself, he is headed for self-destruction, end quote. We want to show this. If there was only one cord, that may not be enough for you to live the abundant life, the resurrection life, the eternal life that God wants you to have in the earth. And then Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter, the 12th verse in the King James Version says, and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. So now there's the two cords. But what happened if they unravel? But there is a threefold cord that is not quickly broken. So in this, that is like a braid. And we can see that in Isaiah 40th chapter, the 31st verses. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And that word wait in Hebrew means bind. We're binding together with God so that when we are running. We're running because he's in reinforcing us. When we are walking, we are walking because he's reinforcing us. And even if we need to fly, it's because he is reinforcing us. Then we will not fall. We will not faint. We will not be wearied. Let's look at that scripture in the Amplified version, the classic edition, and we're going to begin with verse 26 from the Isaiah 40th chapter. And it says, lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their hosts by number and calls them all by name through the greatness of his might. And because he is strong in power and not one is missing or lacks anything. Why, O oh, Jacob, do you say and declare, O oh, Israel, my way and my lot are hidden from the Lord, and my right hand is passed over with our regard from my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint nor grow weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint and weary. And to them that have no might, he increases strength, causing it to multiply and making it to abound. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and selected young men shall feebly stumble and fall exhausted. But they that wait for the Lord who expect, look for, and a hope in him shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift up their wings and mount up close to God as 
eagles mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. We want to end with this story that happened in 1932 at the USS Akron Naval Base. This is Navy apprentice seaman C. M. Coward, and they were on this journey. But what happened is two of the men that he was working with fell to their death, and a third one fell but broke his arm. But he was the only one who, for two hours, stay connected and how did he do it he said he tied himself into the rope and he hung on for two hours so we're saying here that naturally he did it but we want to make sure that we're doing it for a lifetime because our security and our maturity rest in God alone. How would we like to close this program today? Determine to make any necessary adjustment to accommodate God's dream in your heart. If you give others something that is too big for them, instead of them raising it up to its highest point, they will be more likely to bring it down to their size. God gives us his own vision to adjust any difference we may have, then we can maintain perfect union with heaven's plan. That's 2020 vision. So stretch goals, perceive, believe, receive, and agree with the king in all of his glory, as well as the kingdom of God. And that's X ray vision and that's heaven on earth this is captain Greg foster for king's portion where we speak to the royal blood in you you have been listening to the king's portion with radio host Catherine joy foster today's podcast is available for download log on to blog.kingsportionlive.com or email info at kingsportionlive.com.